So my name is Brittany Bradley. I'm a guest artist with Shorts Call Professional. If you didn't see the stories, tonight is a round table discussion and we're just gonna chit chat and parlay a little bit. So we're talking about diversity, right? So I told you who I am and my title within Shorts Cough, but I'm a full-time mom, I'm a full-time wife, full-time hairstylist and studio owner, and I'm black. That's right, I'm a black girl. So um, because I'm black, I have a very, I'm a little sensitive to what's happening in our country right now, in the US of A, and it, I feel like we're at this really important time in our lives, even as um, artists, where we can no longer pick and choose to hide or to share what's um, what's relevant with us. Right. We have to really it, it, it is what it is. Things are out in the open. And so our personal lives are slowly merging with our creative and our professional lives. And so with that being said, um, being more vocal and being more vulnerable and having an open ear and an open heart to really listen and receive what black people are really dealing with right now is just everything. And so for those to even um, listen to me, or if you're on my Instagram, which is at Brittany with the blue hair, or if you know me in real life, you know, I just appreciate everyone just listening because I think that's the major thing we need to do. So some amazing artists, they're going to come on live with me and share just their experience and what they're hoping with um, our industry and what, what can transpire and what can take place. So I have some friends that are part of SKP that are beautiful, amazing black women um, that are going to pop on and just talk about their experience. So I've been an educator with Shores Cough maybe... I think I'm a little over two years now and I'm really um, proud of our company. And I'm not just saying that because I'm live on their account. I'm a very blunt, honest person. Trust me. So I'm very proud of Schwarzkopf and I'm very proud of this brand. I'm very proud of Hinkle Beauty Brands and to be a part of it. Uh, one of the reasons that I became an educator was because one, I'm a super hair nerd and I want to know every little thing. I, I want to know how does that work for us? And so one of the first educators for, from Shorts Call that came to my salon was a black woman. Her name is Jania Church and she's going to be on here and she's like my girl crush. I was so proud to see someone that looked like me in the room, but running the room and running the class. And that feeling was like, oh my God, like I could do this. Like I could be an educator for a major brand and be black. Like they hire black girls. <laughs> so just having that feeling like bubble up inside of me was like astounding. And you know, now, I mean, this is years ago, but now here it is, I'm on the same team with her in education. And it's not just, you know, one black girl, but you know, it's, it's two of us. And then in our big education team, there's several of us. And of course, we are still growing. And of course, there's room for more, you know, but to see that this is a company that is embracing diversity, bringing on, you know, new artists and artists of different nationalities, you know, races, backgrounds, ethnicities, uh, religion, everything. I just, that to me is like, it's, it's just so beautiful. Hi. Hi, Brittany. Hi, everybody. Look at your hair. It's, it looks so this is inspired by you, my love. Well, you know, no. <laughs> my name is X Ray Wright. I've been working for Schwartz Golf Professional for about 18 years now. Um, and doing hair. Sorry. Doing this Wait, like, because. Like, in the background. That's but yeah, okay. so I've been doing this for 18 years and I've been doing hair for about 21. But I've been. Um, blessed to be an educator for sports golf for 18 years so and the only company I've ever worked for how are you feeling about everything that's transpired because you know me I'm, I'm very <laughs> very transparent so right that's what this discussion is it's like how are you feeling like and don't sugarcoat like what are your thoughts about everything but it's been really good to be able to talk to all of my friends um yeah people of all different um ethnic backgrounds religious backgrounds so um, it's, it's nice to know that even with everything, all the crazy stuff that's going on, there's a lot of people that really, they truly do care. Um, yeah. And they're letting you know that they are impacted by everything that's going on also. So Yeah. I, I'm noticing that too. So I would get very upset when like 
Trayvon Martin died and Philando Castile died and all these people died at the hands of police brutality and like nobody was saying anything. And it would make me right. feel like nobody cares. You know what I mean? So, and so now that we're able to really face this and see like, wait, like this is not right. And I wonder if since COVID shut everybody down and made us all like sit down somewhere, yes. I wonder if it forced us to like really see what was happening do you know what right. I mean? For everyone to be like, wait, no, this isn't right. Everything that's going on in the world definitely is forcing us to sit down and take a real good look at ourselves and just our humanity. Here right, right. right. And, and, and I think it, at the end of the day, it is just being a human being. Like if things aren't right, we're human beings. We have to be able to see other people that maybe don't look like us or don't live their lives like us as still being human beings. And I think yeah. like that's, that right there is like everything. When, when there's someone who's white or different nationality, they have almost the luxury of being who they are without thinking about it. But when you're black, you know, especially like, especially when you're black and let's say you work in a predominantly white salon, uh, Jeanette, <laughs> thanks girl. <laughs> when you're black and you work in a predominantly white salon, you know, and then don't let another black girl come there to work. Oh, you know, they all have to look and emulate you. You know what I mean? And that's the, that's the part that kind of sucks is because it's like, we are human beings. We're allowed to be diversified even within ourselves, which is one reason why I'm so happy to have everybody pop in here and request to go live so that I can show, we can show that there's diversity. It's so good to see you. I love your braids. I am fine, beautiful. It's very nice to see you. What would you like to add to the round table, my dear? Well, um, I want to make it short and sweet because we know I'm yes. capable of talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is this sits very near to my heart. I've been in um, education for 20 years. Wow. And I remember at 23 when I first um, went to Carlton to get a job, I didn't see anyone in the salon that looked like me. And yeah. I remember being youthful enough to ask just a genuine question. And that question was, do you hire black girls? And that's when we still have voicemails. And I remember by the time I got home, Karen was on my phone asking me to come in the next day. Wow. And that's what, just, that's what started my career. I always knew that I was more than just a hairdresser for the African-American community. Yes. And um, through Carlton is what just really, really helped me to be in touch with great mentors and helped me to identify that I wanted to get into education. Uh, what I will say, um, some of the challenges is that when you go into an environment where you don't see yourself mm -hmm. and you walk into an environment where it's completely different from being an African-American environment, and I would say that the challenge used to be, and sometimes it still exists, to be quite honest, is that can you, do you understand our hair? Can you do our hair? Right. And I have found, um, firstly, that's why it was really important for me to learn how to communicate well. That's why I've taken so many classes to communicate so that I could communicate outside of my frustration and I could still be heard. Right. And that was very important to me. But that was frustrating because I felt like I had to prove myself even more. Yeah. I had to prove that I can do it. Yeah. And so what I would say is in the time that we're living in now, still, and it's hurtful to say, but I'll say it. Yeah. I feel like um, just being an African-American woman, we as African-American people had started to deal with not being whole completely yeah yeah and it was a silent conversation that you accepted yeah and so when i look at these platforms i look at everything that's going on now i feel like it's a very important time because mm -hmm. let's be clear there are certain conversations that even when i'm in an all african-american environment i don't have because right. i have friends of all colors that right. i love dearly and i have friends that are different from what i choose to be right yeah. And so I don't have those private conversations because I always thought about how hurt I would be if my friends that I love yeah. had conversations about Black people behind my back. Right, absolutely. So 
I always think it's important for everyone that's not African American to understand the fabric of our hair so right. that you could be just as diverse as we are with knowing right. how to understand all the fabrics. And so I'm just grateful for the for this forum and yeah. for us to be able to be open. Um, not identif not understanding that we have not always been whole, it just made us stronger. But right. now this is opening up a different language and a language of love. And yes. I'm excited to see what's next. You know, we're in a, a in a season where people are all about cancel culture. And yes. I don't believe in cancel culture because when you cancel people out, you can't walk in forgiveness. People can't grow. That's we can't right. get stronger. We can't evolve. And I don't think what people realize is you know, we're the hairdressers right now, but we have a whole nother generation Absolutely. that's gonna be coming afterwards. And what trend do we want them to follow? Okay, I know what it felt like when I see you on the screen, Erica, mm -hmm. and I know how that felt for me to see you at that area in your career. And it was like, oh my gosh, like I could do that. And I know how it felt seeing Jania and, and Alicia. And, and so I think about, you know, you three black women that have been, that are there and here I am just getting into, you know, the same arena as you guys. So I want the people that's coming after me to, like, who knows what they're going to see? Do you know what I mean? One of the things that we have to do in our culture is not look for celebration all the time outside, but we yeah. can because of what the damage that has been done to us mentally. Yeah. And so one of the beautiful things we have with the SKP culture is that we embrace each other. Yes. And that's beautiful. It's not a competition. Yes. I can say congrats to you. And I'm yes. happy to see you hosting this forum. And Thank I you. love you. I love you too. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> you guys don't know, but I'm like super marshmallow. I will cry like that. So but you I'm can't cry. Really you got to go to the next person. So thank right. you for having me. <laughs> right. And I'll see you soon. Hi! I miss you. I miss you too. How are you? It's not the same. Like, Facebook and Instagram is one thing, but like being in person, like, it's not the same, man. You know what? It's been, it's been really emotional, you yeah. know? Um, <clears throat> I think of even when I, when my first salon I went to, all white salon, and the owner, he was cool. He was like, I'll give you a chance. And I remember the first lady that was my client. And she's like, um, do you do white people here? And then I was mm. like, why would I? And in my mind, I'm thinking like, well, why would I be here if I didn't do right. it? Yes, I do all textures. Hair is like fabric. I know yep. how to do all textures, you know? Yep. And I felt like I had to carry myself a certain way. With George Floyd, that touched me. Like, I'm still messed up from it. Yeah. But I realized his sacrifice is making us have this conversation. So I've been having a lot of conversations with my clients and my clients are predominantly white. Yeah. And I appreciate them for even having the conversation. I truly found out that I was black yeah. in December of 2019. Wow. I was raised in a predominantly white area, went to private mm -hmm. schools. Um, you know, then when we moved, we moved to a white neighborhood. So I felt like I was always the token one. I was yeah. like in. So yeah. they looked at me like, oh, you know, you're the ghetto black girl or whatever like that. I've learned that it doesn't matter how articulate you speak, how well you carry yourself. Exactly. How nice you do your hair, um, you know, how, how well groomed and behaved your kids are. Because that's it, another, you know, sly comment. Yeah. It doesn't matter. People will always see you as black. There are clients that that you can feel that they don't want you to do their hair, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. The thing I realized with all this that's happening, it's bigger than us. Oh, yeah. Okay? It is. Bigger than us. Yeah. And the reason we have to speak up, the reason we have to keep moving forward is because we got to do this for our kids. I no longer get offended or upset by the way somebody else feels about yeah. me. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that's how you feel about me, that's your business. Hi. <laughs> You look adorable. Yeah. Think about, okay, well, how can we start to educate people in a virtual sense versus yeah. being able to touch them? We have to be able to teach people how to do their own That's hair right. now. And then my brother, uh, George Floyd, yeah. I cry every day. Yeah. Brianna Taylor, 
They still yeah. haven't arrested her um, police officers, just in case anybody was wondering. Right. And I hear George Floyd, George Floyd's daughter saying, my daddy changed the world. It brings me to tears every time yeah. because that man doesn't know that as yeah. he lived his life, he was going to change the world. If it wasn't for the pandemic and people sitting at home, this conversation would not be happening. Absolutely. We've come too far. We can, things cannot be the same. No, we've reached a point um, where we as, can't go back. You know, I just think that if you put yourself in your bubble, that's where you're going to stay. That's Allow right. yourself to stretch out and, and learn and, and be with other people so that you yeah. can become a more well-rounded person. And you, ha you have to Absolutely. diversify yourself. But a lot of times when you're white, exactly. you can just do white hair and no one will blink an eye that you don't have black clients, you know? And so I've always had Absolutely. this mindset. And me and Jania talked about it when we did our live was... If I have to learn all types of hair, why don't you? And it really does go back to the beauty that. schools. Beauty schools, a lot are very mm -hmm. segregated. Schwarzkopf Professional understands. That's right. <laughs> and you know what? They do get it. Yeah. And I do want to say this because it just came to mind that Hinkle Beauty Brands, I want to say, it helped me out, and if you're still here, I believe they donated like over $200,000 towards the NAACP. Like that's nice, nice. I don't even want to, I'm not going to cry. Y'all not going to get me to cry, but right, that's, that's right. just, that's amazing. <laughs> Hi, Jania. How are you? Hi. So Jania, all these talks I've been talking about, the first black educator at that level that came to my salon, this is who it was. This is Jania. When you have a desired role or a desired career, you, you want to see, well, does, is someone black there? Could someone black do it, you know? And so I look up to, all these amazing Black women that are part of creative directive teams and Jania, who's on the guest artist team. And I mean, she owns like 50 million salons and she's just, she's just amazing. It really means a lot that you're in that position because other people are looking to the, you know, looking to our brand yeah. to say, Hey, you know, are you in mm -hmm. inclusive in that way? And it really was important that, and it showed me how our role does have an effect and impact in our industry. It's just the culture that SKP has created is very inclusive, I feel. Yes. Uh, the fact that I've seen a lot more diversity, but I think it's great because other people are watching. And I think yes. that this is important for them to see. Where being the only black person at my salon, I worked at an um, all white salon and everyone, you know, I told someone it's the same feeling. It's like, I'm always on stage. I'm always yes. on stage always. every single time. I'm always on stage. And so we have to, you know, set that bar even higher um, every time we go to the salon. And believe yes. it or not, a lot of people that have given me an opportunity in my career have actually been white. So Alwyn is asking, what's a good way to entice more ethnicities to your salon? Go ahead, Janine. Take it away. Yes. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, so what <laughs> I would say is, one, if you don't have enough content that can show that you're able to do that kind of work, maybe you need to put out a model call. And you can do a model call looking for people of all ethnicities or different textures of hair. And then that way you can build your content that you can start sharing on your page. So if other people are looking and then like the select hashtags that are going to pull those people in, but also they can start to see that on your pages. I do think that when you hone in on your craft, you know what I mean? And when you really are well rounded. And I think Alicia said the laws of attraction. That's right. You get what you attract.